So I remember when I first found out that I was going to be giving a TED Talk in December of 2014, and my initial reaction was, oh my gosh, I'm giving a TED Talk. I also remember this time last week when my reaction quickly became, oh my gosh, I'm giving a TED Talk. So needless to say, I spent the first half of this event tonight uh, biting my fingernails off, and then the second half on the uh, brink of tears. And uh, now all I'm really concerned about is how this little red dot is going to beg to trip me. So anyway, <laughs> this is not what I do, and it's not what I'm good at. In fact, uh, what I do is very different than this, I Instagram. And uh, that's really unique. So I create, and I create what I want my tomorrow to look like on Instagram. And so I curate and edit my personal account, which is the extreme opposite of this. Uh, I can't backspace or edit what I'm saying now. So that brings me to the beginning of my story. Uh, let's rewind the clock to May of 2014. We are all leaving Tulane for summer, and I'm headed to my internship. It was an incredible internship, and they worked very closely with this organization called That LA Community. That was one too many slides. Missing a slide. Anyway, That LA Community. And what That LA Community is, it is a Instagram hashtag and um, account with the explicit purpose of connecting artists and photographers across Louisiana. And I was just mesmerized. So I really jumped into this Instagram community and started posting these artistic photos. And after a while, Instagram caught wind of what I was doing. And they reached out to me and said, hey, we really like your photos. And we want to promote you in what's called the Suggested User Program on Instagram. And as you may be able to guess, when a photo sharing company who once had 63 million followers endorses your work, you end up with a pretty big following yourself and an even greater social pressure to produce these artistic photos. Um, and that pressure would really push me artistically, but it, it sort of captured my ability to stage beauty. But I'm worried that it really only captured what I thought was my self-worth. And turns out, having a strong sense of self-worth is actually very important. Brene Brown, who is one of my all-time inspirations, says that vulnerability is the birthplace of connection and the path to feeling worthiness. What researchers know is that vulnerability is the key internal link to connection, authenticity, and worthiness. The problem is Instagram and Facebook ask us to outsource our worthiness to our friends and to our followers. And in a marketplace where likes and jealousy and envy are the dominant currency, you know, that's why you follow those celebrities and the people that photograph life well, because you want it, you envy it, so in exchange you give it a like. In that marketplace, the last thing that we look for in other people is authenticity and vulnerability. And I'm worried that it's the last thing we look for on ourselves. But the economics of social media is so much more lucrative than that. You do nothing more than market your lifestyle with every photo that you post online. And more than that, Every like that you amass represents a theoretical endorsement of that lifestyle. And what's scary is a lack of likes now constitutes a personal failure and a sign that what you imaged online is not worthy of approval. And I'm worried that we're assigning that same disapproval to ourselves and to our lives. And that's the heart of the problem. Inadequacy fuels a majority of our online and offline social encounters, and it's rooted in comparison. Comparison, specifically Instagram envy, tells us that we aren't enough, that we aren't social enough, we aren't pretty enough, we aren't wealthy enough, and it speaks the language of better than. Look at her photo with all of her friends, man, she's better than me. Look at his photo, he's so well-traveled, man, he must be better than me. We're constantly looking to be declared worthy of approval, of a like, or of a follow, and with that inadequacy, comes alteration to our lives, our bodies, our social lives, and even our personalities. We found the perfect way to be the person we always wanted to be by just photographing the right angles of our life. And that inadequacy, it causes us to run from ourselves and purge away the parts of ourselves that we don't like. We end up running from ourselves, all while searching for ourselves. We can run from the identity that we have offline and run towards the identity that we want online. And there's a thing or two that I've learned about running from yourself through my Instagram experience. 
I've learned that the first thing that you run from when you can edit the parts of your life you don't like is your imperfections. And in a close second place is your insecurities. And that means third place has to be authenticity and vulnerability because you cannot be authentic without imperfections and you cannot be vulnerable without insecurities. And Instagram, it's the lab where insecurity is tested. When we feel insecure, it allows us to take the good and leave the bad. Or better yet, create the good and leave the bad. And if we manufacture our photos, we manufacture our lives, and it's a simple equation. I Instagram, therefore I am. I Instagram wealth, therefore I'm wealthy. I Instagram beauty, therefore I'm beautiful. I Instagram adventure, therefore I am adventurous. We have increased the visibility of our lives while decreasing the visibility of ourselves and of our personalities. And as both the photographer and the photographed, we know exactly what to keep and exactly what to leave. That means we can be as perfect as we want to be, able to imagine whatever life circumstances we want because we have a second life. We have an Instagram life. And through my Instagram experience, I've reached a couple of conclusions. And after talking to many of you, I find that it's a shared experience, and that is exposing yourself is key to authenticity. The problem is exposing yourself runs hand in hand with vulnerability. And every time we launch our Instagram and Facebook apps, we're told not to expose the unedited and imperfect sides of our life. And that is what's disconnecting us. The moments in a friendship where you expose what's hurting, what you're struggling with, what you need help with, those moments are always non-comparative and always non-competitive. Yet we apply both comparison and competition to social media platforms that were designed to honor connection and honor friendship. And it's because we play Instagram like it's some sort of bougie video game, constantly trying to beat our high score. But I don't think it's the Instagram accounts and the Facebook accounts that are the problem. In fact, I think they're part of the solution. When we outsource our worthiness to them, we give them power over connection. And connection, it's not found on iPhone screens, it's found in photos. We're given a map, a blueprint, a timeline to trace back the time that we lived and felt and did. So let's Instagram and post. And post what we do and what we've done. Post what makes us happy and what makes us sad. Post what makes you laugh until your face hurts and cry uncontrollably. Post what keeps you up at night. But also post what makes you want to wake up in the morning. Even if it doesn't break your like record, even if it messes up your follower to following ratio, post what makes you, you. Even if it makes this little orange envious heart break. Thank you so much. <laughs>